Good morning. Um, my name is Angela Robinson Pinon, and I am a deputy city administrator with the city administrator's office. And if uh, you can go to the next slide, please. So just briefly, these are our key uh, team members. Um, our former city administrator, Ed Riskin. Um, now we're joined by interim city administrator, Harold Duffy, Elizabeth Betsy Lake, assistant city administrator, uh, Ms. Latana Simmons, also an assistant city administrator, myself, Joe DeVries, Deputy, Deputy City Administrator, excuse me, um, and Nicole Nedich, Acting Citywide Communications Director, and R. Shelley, Shelley Garza, Executive Assistant to the City Administrator. And so briefly, you know, the mission of the City Administrator's Office is to provide strategic leadership in support of the Mayor, the City Council, and City Departments. And, and so we also try to motivate and challenge and encourage the efficient and equitable delivery of services throughout um, the city. Next slide, please. So our business goals are to administer the affairs of the city effectively and efficiently, um, conduct reviews of city operations to improve you know, the accountability um, and efficiency of government towards equitable outcomes. We want to manage and coordinate citywide service delivery and certainly we wanna you know, support the enforcement of all applicable laws and ordinances within the city. We also try to advance the city's goals and build organizational capacity, provide expertise and support to the mayor and city council. And we also uh, work to advance the mayor's and council's priorities. And so just briefly, this is a org chart. Um, it doesn't note um, our interim city administrator, but it shows how we're generally organized where we have, of course, the city administrator overseeing the entirety of the operation. Ms. Latonda Simmons, assistant city administrator oversees HCD, human services, information technology, the library, um, parks and recreation, the homelessness administration, um, the children's accountability office, measure AA and lead settlement. Whereas um, Betsy Lake, assistant city administrator oversees animal services, economic and workforce development, planning and building, Public Works, Transportation, Oak 311, um, Special Projects um, as well, and um, oversees the Reimagining One Stop Permitting Program. And myself, um, I coordinate liaise with the City Clerk's Office, um, support ADA programs, um, our Equal Opportunity Programs, Agenda Management as well. And then um, we have our Deputy City Administrator, Mr. Joe DeVries, who oversees our um, sustainability office, um, coordinates the Neighborhood Services Program, um, the TCC grant, um, and so on and so forth. Whereas the City Administrator has direct oversight and liaises with the Finance Department, Fire Department, Human Resources, Police, Department of Race and Equity, Violence Prevention, Workplace and Employment Standards, and of course, Communications. Next slide, please. So um, within our office, we have a number of responsibilities. Um, we manage the agreement with Oakland Museum of California, and we also provide um, quite a bit of commission assistance and our liaison support. For example, we have the Privacy Advisory Commission, redistricting, um, police commission, um, safety and services oversight. Uh, these uh, commissions, some of which you learned about during the public safety day three um, uh, orientation. We also facilitate working groups, wildfire prevention, Lake Merritt, encampment management. And we're also developing a performance management system. And we also support, um, uh, provide facilitation and support for city employees participating in Alameda County Leadership Program. We also um, support agenda management in city council, city council meeting support throughout the city. Um, so we liaise very much with the council president and the city clerk's office in that regard. And we also manage the city's administrative instructions, which if you're not familiar with those, they, um, the administration um, administrative uh, instructions uh, seek to implement um, policies and procedures that are in city ordinances. And so basically the AIs um, translate that into um, as, as standard operating procedures or work plans per se. Um, next slide, please. And with that, I will hand it off to Mr. Joe DeVries, Deputy City Administrator, um, to discuss the Neighborhood Services Program and several other um, units under his purview. 
Thank you, Deputy City Administrator Robinson Pignon, and good morning, uh, President Bass and members of the council. Uh, as Angela stated, I'm Joe DeVries. I serve as the Deputy City Administrator and the Chief Resilience Officer. Uh, neighborhood Services is one of the units uh, that, that really um, moved over to, this, to the City Administrator's Office from the Police Department uh, two years ago as we reimagined public safety in the wake of the George Floyd murder. Uh, and the Neighborhood Services mission uh, is every block is organized, every neighbor is skilled, networked, and empowered to work together and in partnership with the city, county, and outside community organizations to solve problems and build a healthy, resilient uh, community. Uh, next slide, please. So the, what, what the service, what Neighborhood Services does, we provide support to neighborhood councils and to neighborhood watch groups, uh, provide continuous engagement with residents to ensure that people are connected to city services, uh, facilitating interdepartmental coordination. As some of you are familiar, we've created uh, what we call uh, neighborhood enhanced service teams, uh, really uh, where the neighborhood service coordinators are targeting resources in our, our, our most challenged neighborhoods with, with the worst equity indicators in East, Central East and West Oakland. Um, they also uh, conduct ongoing trainings uh, with residents uh, to, to help them uh, better navigate city services uh, and, and they perform uh, uh, leadership development as well. Um, we have 44 neighborhood councils throughout the city established under the community policing program. Uh, the coordinators serve as liaisons to them uh, they assist them in identifying priorities. So these are typically uh, things that go beyond a 311 request, but may require multiple departments to get involved uh, where, where there's a broad community consensus about a priority that needs to be addressed. And, and we do outreach in these neighborhoods. Uh, and especially with in 2023, with the pandemic waning, uh, we're able to do much more in-person work. Uh, as uh, Council President Bass knows, we had a wonderful outreach event in her district yesterday, and we'll be doing a lot more of those as, as we move into the new year. Uh, that So that was neighborhood services. The other part of resilience that, that um, I get to head up is our sustainability unit. Uh, we moved our sustainability unit into the city administrator's office just six months ago. Uh, it, it had sat in the public works department. And the reason for the move was to really elevate the importance of implementing our equitable climate action plan uh, so that uh, it, would, it would sit in our office so that all departments would feel a commitment to the plan. Um, the, 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 the plan itself, which I won't spend a lot of time on today, uh, is, is extremely thorough. It has 40 actions. Uh, we're addressing about 20 actions per year. Uh, and it really is doing two things. One is our attempts to stop climate change by reducing local emissions, um, by removing carbon from our environment, uh, by, by electrifying our buildings and, and, and electrifying our cars and getting people out of cars and into public transit, uh, but, but also adapting to climate change, uh, building more resilient infrastructure and more resilient communities uh, to make sure that we as a community are prepared for the shocks and stresses that climate change is bringing. And I think when, when you look at the wildfires that we experienced, especially in 2020, the uh, atmospheric rivers that we're experiencing now, we're, we will see more and more of this. And so the goal is to really protect our communities with, a, with an eye towards, again, those equity neighborhoods that are, that are most vulnerable. Uh, next slide, please. So the sustainability unit uh, has, we, we support interdepartmental ECAP action items. So we work with, with every department on their role in implementing the ECAP. Uh, we do a lot of grant applications to help support those, those departments with the resources they need. Uh, the, the team serves as consultants, if you will, or experts uh, to advise departments, the council and the mayor on, on these issues, uh, conducting technical analysis on climate resilience conditions, uh, providing planning and long-term service provision. And then the really what's ex especially important this year is, is uh, implementation at the community level. So really getting these programs out to the community. There are a lot of incentives that, that uh, we wanna make sure are available for our equity neighborhoods. Um, so some examples, uh, building out resilience hubs, uh, spaces with reliable elect electricity during power outages, clean air uh, during smoke and heat days, where we're putting um, portable air filtration systems in all of our libraries and rec centers so that we can provide that cleaner air, um, reducing the wildfire risk. Uh, and, and creating healthier forests, and then building that EV infrastructure. And I just want to note, it was just on the news this morning, a study came out, neighborhoods where people have switched more to electric cars have seen a decline in asthma hospitalization rates. And so we, we see a direct localized health impact 
So not only are we focusing on the entire planet, but we're really focusing on our neighborhoods and we can have an immediate impact on people's health. Uh, next slide, please. Um, it is a small division uh, with a big dollar influence. We expect, uh, so we have about a, a million dollars a year in staff costs, um, but we are a revenue generating division, uh, especially with the um, infrastructure, uh, the, pardon me, the Inflation Reduction Act and the Infrastructure and Investment Jobs Act. Um, we estimate a target for Oakland of $1.5 billion from these two acts being brought into Oakland through private incentives and through public infrastructure. Uh, and um, there's been a lot of ad hoc funding for this group. We're going to see a lot more funding coming down very soon. Uh, part of that project that really centers equity is our Transformative Climate Communities Grant, which is a, uh, it's funded $28 million by the Strategic Growth Council. Uh, it's focusing on a five square mile area in deep East Oakland. It's, it's holistic. It's providing affordable housing, active transportation, urban greening, health and well-being. That grant ends in December of 2024, but we're already planning to, to seek additional funds to extend both the length of that project as well as expand the target area further in East Oakland so we can get above International Boulevard and up to MacArthur to really impact those neighborhoods. Next slide, please. Uh, oh, so examples, sorry, we, we, uh, of, of that work, uh, 55 uh, units of affordable housing that are opening literally this month, uh, the, our, our bike program, uh, we have a small business alliance working in particular along International Boulevard, a tenant and anti-displacement program, we have a resource center right at 94th and International, and doing a lot of work with planting justice on their amazing farm that's producing jobs and food uh, for East Oaklanders. Uh, next slide, please. And so that's a great transition to our food security unit, which is also part of our resilience structure. Uh, we, of course, have our sugar sweetened beverage money, Measure HH, which provides about $8 million a year. Uh, it goes to parks, it goes to um, uh, human services, it goes to the school district, and it also goes to community grants. And it has a, a board that oversees the work. Uh, board members serve a three-year term. Uh, next slide. Uh, we also have... Um, uh, the Saba Grocers Food Card Program, which some of you are familiar with, that's putting out food cards to people that are very food insecure. Um, we have basically 2 million in direct food assistance. Um, and we also, uh, next slide, please. We also have our, our summer food service program. Uh, we are very excited that we uh, served over 100,000 meals last year. We expect to expand even more uh, this summer uh, in terms of the number of sites, but also in terms of engaging small emerging local minority owned businesses to see that more of them get contracts to provide this food. And we're building out food hubs. We have one at Arroyo Viejo that is in partnership with the county, uh, and we expect to do more, more food hub work in the coming year.